Order at 6.45 on Monday, December 5th, and I would look for a motion to go to closed session. So moved. Tom? I can second that. Megan? And we need a roll call, I believe. Yes. Howry? Yes. Green? Yes. Mooney? Yes. Fessler? Yes. And Fisher? All are present. Okay, we shall adjourn across the hall, correct, Erin? Yes, that's correct. Yes, and I will end the, uh, <laughs> the webinar for now, and we will reopen when you are all in, yes. turned in open session. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah.
Okay, so we, the meeting is back in open session, and we have some consent agenda items. Uh, Consent agenda items contain the minutes of the November 21st, 2022 school board meeting, some professional staffing recommendations, uh, some co-curricular staffing recommendations, and some personnel items uh, not necessary for a vote. Uh, I would look for a motion to approve as presented. I'll make that. Bruce, thank you. I'll second. Kate, thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Uh, and that we move into public comments. Have we got anything thus far, Angie? Not that I've been made aware of. And if you'd like me to ask any members of the public that might want to register. Okay. Okay. Uh, if We'll give it a couple of minutes. I will well, do this reading. Just I'll, I'll ask one, one moment. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So if you would like to make a public appearance by speaking to the board, please utilize the Q&A portion found at the bottom of your Zoom window. In the Q&A, we would ask that you type your name, address, subject of interest, and whether you've discussed this item prior to the meeting with either a district administrator or President Howery. After submitting the information, I would transfer over to speak to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Mm -hmm. In accordance with school board policy 167.3, the McFarland School Board welcomes public comment during regular meetings. The board will accept public comments via individuals who are physically present at the board meeting, who are participating in the board meeting virtually, or who have sent an email to the board president or superintendent in advance of the meeting. Please note the following. Participants are required to register their intention to participate in the notice public comment portion of the meeting upon their arrival at the meeting and shall begin their comments by stating their name, address, and group affiliation if uh, and when appropriate. Participants shall address only topics within the legitimate jurisdiction of the board. The board members will not directly respond to comments and may only take action on topics that are on the published agenda. Participants are asked to limit their comments to five minutes in duration. Written comments will have a word limit of 250 words. The portion of the meeting for public comment is limited to 60 minutes unless extended by a vote of the board. Participants shall direct all comments to the board and observe reasonable decorum. Thank you. Angie, have we got anyone? No, we have not. Okay, that being the case, we'll move on to our McFarland High School student report. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello. Joey. <laughs> okay, it looks like I am unable to share my screen. So I don't know if that's something that needs to be fixed by the host. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Now it works. <laughs> All right, excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much. All righty. Um, so once this loads here, there you go. Um, most recently at McFarland High School, we held the McFarland Craft and Vendor Fair on December 3rd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So McFarland High School Spartan headquarters and students helped with the craft and vendor fair and there were a multitude of local vendors and student tables. So thank you and a great job to all the vendors and students who participated and helped out. Uh, I think I do believe we will be having another one in the spring or soon. So very exciting. Um, McFarland High School also took a trip to UW Whitewater uh, for their creative writing festival. So a group of students went there, um, I think last Wednesday. So, and then this is a quote from the website. 
So each year, approximately 750 high school students, grades 9 through 12, and teachers participate in this festival, offering them a chance to hear their work discussed by their peers and writing professionals in the college setting. So super cool opportunity for all students in, at MHS in, um, interested in creative writing. So that was awesome. Our forensics team is also hosting a fundraiser, a Candy Grimes fundraiser, to help them uh, to help fund their club uh, for their future competitions that they will be participating in. Uh, so good luck to them this year. Last year, they even made it to state. So hopefully they will get enough funds so that they can do it again this year. McFarland Decca, another club at MHS from December 9th through 11th, uh, will be attending the CLRC, Central Region Leadership Conference in Milwaukee. So 26 members of McFarland Decca uh, will be joining um, our advisors, I think, on this field trip. So at this conference, students will get to listen to speakers, attend workshops, um, and compete in career-based competitions. And then finally, also this weekend, our uh, high school Model UN team will take on the Madison Area Model United Nations Conference um, at Monona Grove High School. So this, I think, is, I don't know, probably the 28th, 29th uh, annual conference. Uh, so this will be on December 10th. Um, so our Model United Nations chapter is really excited for that. And that's about all I have. Are there any questions? Joey, how many members are in your DECA club? Ooh. Because there seems to be a lot going to Milwaukee. There's a lot. Um, Does everyone go that want to go or? So, so yes. So DECA is a cool club in the aspect that there are a, like a number of different activities that you can participate in. So there's like community service, like different types of like business and creativity like activities and then there's like competition career based with career based like events um and that's kind of what i think their conference this weekend will be um i think there i really don't know how many members there are but i think last year there was like 150 it's a really huge club they do a lot of great stuff so yeah hey okay, thanks and if i'm not mistaken i think when ginger came on board we were probably below 20 yeah. I think yeah. at, at one point. It, it was just about, you know, non-existent. So kudos to everyone involved there. And uh, if we don't have anything else, Joey, thank you very much once again. Thank and you. Have a great weekend. You thank too. You. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Joey. Thanks. Okay. Next we have informational items, a presentation of pupil non-discrimination summary report. Lauren, the floor is yours. All right, so each year, uh, every district in the state of Wisconsin is required to submit to the Department of Public Instruction uh, the number of incidents of harassment and discrimination uh, that occurred the previous year. So you should have received in your handout a chart that says um, the number of incidents that occurred. So you see we have nine protected classes that then we report out on. And for this case, discrimination is, is defined as a district, the district being policy or a staff member treating a student differently because of one of the protected classes. So that is, that is where you see discrimination. Harassment is, a student to student interaction. Um, so that's the difference there between those two, again, based on that protected class. So um, a formal response would be that the school office may have, uh, would have had a direct um, response to an incident or that the school board responded, right? So it could be an expulsion. Um, and then informal being that it could have been a complaint that was withdrawn or that was handled, again, more in that informal manner that we didn't have to take an additional step. And then other would be a different agency actually responded or made the decision for us. So being the Department of Public Instruction, the Office of Civil Rights, um, it could even be a, our local police department were the ones who made uh, the, the actual final decision in that. 
And so when you look at, at our report for this year, there were five incidences that had been reported to me, two of them uh, in the protected class of sex and two of them in the protected class of race and one in um, regarding sexual orientation. So five incidents of the year that we then responded in a more formal manner. Right. So er every year this gets submitted. Um, I don't have, I could go back, I don't have with me kind of what our progression was over time in the last few years. If that is information that you would like, I can, I can go back and and send it to you. Uh, so yeah, any questions on that? I was going to ask you that question. <laughs> yeah. um, but probably a greater question is, with the advent of a lot of initiatives here in the district over the years, PBIS, mm -hmm. the position paper on discrimination, whatever it is, do we feel that that has had a significant impact on this category? Do you know? I don't. So when I actually went back, a few years as I was submitting this report mm -hmm. just to see. And we have we have stayed very similar in numbers. It actually, I want to say in my first couple of years, we had zero incidences. And so mm -hmm. right now, um, I would say we're seeing a bit of an uptick. But I would say that's not necessarily that the incidences weren't happening. It's people are reporting them and feeling comfortable of, of what mm -hmm. our response may be. Uh, I also was at a conference recently um, and that was led by the individual at DPI who actually collects all of this for information. And he said every single district in the state of Wisconsin in the last three years has been seeing an uptick of incidences uh, regarding people non-discrimination. Is that due to the pandemic? And if so, when might that level up? Mm -hmm. He did not say. He did not give a, a hypothesis of what mm -hmm. he, he thought was happening. So it's hard to say. It would be a bit coincidental maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, you could certainly look at that as a potential mm -hmm. factor. Well, the good news, there's only five incidences. Mm -hmm. The bad news is that we had five incidences. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm remembering correctly, this is about par for the last mm -hmm. however yes. many years I can remember. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I would say it reflects kind of the greater society as far as that goes. But, uh, yeah, I, didn't, I, I thought this didn't seem, you know, like it was really bad, which is kind mm -hmm. of good, I guess. Great. Anything else for Lauren? It doesn't hurt to raise our expectations. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Absolutely. Thank, right. you Thank you very much. You. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, we have members of the Strategic Plan Committee joining us this evening. Ladies, the floor is yours. Please start by introducing yourself. Hi, I am Becca Hulse. I am a school psychologist for Early Childhood 4K and CEPS. I'm also the district coordinator for Advanced Learner Services. And my favorite role in the district is I'm a parent to a fifth and seventh grader. <laughs> All right, my name is Araceli Ware, and I am a parent of two students in McFarland. Um, and I volunteered to participate in this opportunity. And my name is Samantha. Sorry, <laughs> my name is Samantha Zylinga, and I am a parent to a second grader in the district. And I'm Lena Ka, and I'm a parent to a sixth grader and a ninth grader in this district. Excellent. So Thank we, you very much. We are here today to share um, some information for you about the strategic planning process in you, which you will have the opportunity to take action on tonight. So um, we will be presenting to you in a well-oiled presentation of the WOW you. Um, we're also excited to have Linica joining us to answer some questions as well as our other members at the end. So I ask, as I always do, if you could maybe hold your questions until um, the end so we could make sure that, oh, I gave you an extra. Well, I thought you needed two, my um, So um, ask if you can, just uh, hold your questions until the end is, so we can kind of, maybe we'll answer your questions before you ask them. So I'm gonna start by just talking to you a little bit about the process. Now this may sound very familiar to you, but as we were putting together this presentation, it felt like it made sense of like, how did we get here? And also for the public, um, which will be widely watching this and talking about it with their friends. 
Um, so this process really began as soon as Dr. Anderson uh, was selected as the superintendent. As you will uh, recall, there were some presentations that were done in front of the board about different um, consultants that, that may be able to provide um, some expertise in the strategic planning process. And at that time, the board decided that Dr. Anderson would facilitate the process on his own, given his extensive experience. And so in October, he sent out a, a survey to our stakeholders and started developing priorities based on that information. And the administrative team was really putting together a draft strategic plan. After I was fortunate to be selected as the superintendent, we kind of paused that process and came to you in, in June uh, with a proposal to um, kind of uh, take the information we had gathered but build on it with a, a more comprehensive process that increased community engagement. That was something that we felt we wanted to spend a little more time um, doing and um, proposed having an outside consultant and the board selected Mr. Joe Schrader. After that, we began recruiting for, for kind of two participation, well, really three participation opportunities, if you think of our students. Um, one was a survey was sent to our, our middle school and high school stu students asking for their feedback on our strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We also provided an opportunity for people to participate in listening sessions, which were done virtually, and we had 74, I think, people um, sign up to do that, and that was parents, guardians, um, community members, students, and staff. And then we, of course, had the, the more formal um, two, two sessions of strategic planning committee opportunities, and, and according to my numbers, we had 35 registered and 26 were able to um, continue with that, that commitment. During our first session, we reviewed um, extensive data, which included the information from the listing sessions, which also used that SWOT analysis. And we looked at achievement data, behavior data, mental health data, uh, attendance data, to get a sense of, of what our, our priorities were. With that information, we developed um, our own kind of summary document of strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and drafted a mission and vision with great effort and wordsmithing that we brought forward to you. And thank you, board, for um, approving that in your vote on November 7th. Then on November 11th, we met again. And we were planning to, to spend a day together and a morning together the next day. But we were so efficient and effective that we got it done um, all on that day. And we drafted the commitments, the pillars and five-year strategic objectives, which will be reviewing with you tonight, and you'll have an opportunity to vote on later in the agenda. We also brainstormed some measures for possible objectives, and that was just the group's effort to give um, the administrative team some ideas, um, certainly not, not binding in any, any way, um, given that the <coughs> administrative team has an excellent understanding of, of metrics, but it was very helpful to learn from the team what they thought would be an effective way to assess those objectives. And then we are here um, to you tonight to propose those things to you, but want to also say that following our time with you, the administrative team will be continuing our work with Mr. Schrader. We have him scheduled for uh, a, a two and a half hour um, work session on the end of the month, this month, and then the end of the month. Um, maybe I put it there. Yes, December 20th and January 24th. Um, trying to remember off the top of my head. Um, to put together an action plan based on whatever is approved this evening. So that's the overview of kind of how we got here. So somewhat of a long process, but certainly comprehensive because this is important stuff. So now I am going to turn it over to Araceli, who is going to talk to you a little bit more about some of the additional information you have in front of you. Yes, uh, thanks Aaron. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the experience of participating in this process, but I'd like to start out first by just saying thank you to the board, um, the administration, Aaron and Joe Schrader, um, for the opportunity to participate in such a unique collaboration. 
Um, I'm being honest when I say I am a better human for participating in this process. And I have a great deal of respect for the community out there who continues to give feedback and collaborate in support of all of our learners. Um, the summary is going to include some committee messages that they would like uh, to make the board aware of. You have the detail in your handouts as well, but I picked out a few quotes that I thought were important. Um, the first quote, the planning was really student focused. We really sat in a space and put the students at the top of the agenda. We focused on how to meet the needs of every learner." End quote. Um, I selected this quote because every student slash learner in this community is why we are here. Um, this committee had a great deal of conversation about what it means to support our learners and how our learners are best supported by the learning community that surrounds them. Meaning, our learners, faculty, families, administration, this board, and our community are all essential to the success of our learners and are therefore part of the learning community. Committee members were collaborative, they were engaged, they worked very hard to ensure that everyone was heard and had an equal voice. I quote, the committee was a well-balanced group of school leadership from all grade levels, community members, parents, and students, selected to support and open the viewpoint of every individual, especially the most vulnerable. We stepped outside of our comfort zones to share our personal stories and opinions to understand why we need to enact the proposed plan." End quote. During the session, members had open and honest communication Members were open-minded, they listened to one another, and everyone had an opportunity to have a voice. The sessions were very well facilitated and we spent a lot of time looking at our priorities. I quote, the plans are not the plans based on the input of the people in the room alone. Many of us spoke with others who were not present and all of us reviewed the data and feedback from listening sessions. The resulting decisions are based on the feedback and large portion of our community." End quote. I'd like to bring up one thing that's really hard to put in a written summary. The energy in the room was dynamic. Talking through the feedback from the community listening sessions and from the group in the room required every member to show up and be present in every single moment. We had to show up with passion, required to represent a learning community who really cares about its future and the future of its learners. We had to listen with patience and kindness as we worked through diverse feedback. And we had to have grit to cover all of the topics and maintain focus to ensure that the end result was the best plan possible. In other words, this group really cares. The end result, and I quote, this plan has a foundation in and a focus on building diversity and equity both within our school system and our community and should be used as a tool to showcase what we want our community to be. Diverse backgrounds equals diverse experience, diverse thoughts equals more thoughtful and inclusive decisions. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'm gonna hand it off to Becky to talk through our commitments now. Awesome, thank you. Um, last time Mr. Tarnitzer was here, he presented our mission and vision that the committee had come up with, and thank you for approving those. The mission being meeting the needs of every learner every day, and our vision to be an equitable and inclusive community committed to student belonging, achievement, and growth. Having those in mind, our committee then set forth to come up with commitments to enact that vision. When this started, there was probably a list of like 35 to 40 mm -hmm. commitments, which seemed like a lot, but there was really good discussion and dialogue and really the passion that RSLE was talking about coming out in everyone. Um, it was a great time for learning what was important to ourselves and also important to our community as a whole. And through all of those discussions and conversations and some voting, we came up with eight commitments that we feel really help us become our vision. The first one is belonging, and then the second is growth. You can see that both of those are also tied into our vision of where we wanna go, and they came up as the highest priorities. 
Um, we got really into the weeds a bit about what language we were using and everything. Um, and the, the belonging piece was providing a welcoming and inclusive space for learners to be seen, heard, and valued as their authentic selves. And we thought that was really important to see every person that is part of our school community valued for who they are and who they want to become. Um, the third one was safety, and so that, I won't read all of these word for word because they will be posted on the website after they're approved in case anyone watching is wondering why I'm skipping over some. Um, but safety is really providing that psychological and physical safety that is needed for learning to happen. Um, we have learned through many different initiatives, like Tom had mentioned, PBIS, trauma-sensitive schools, that that psychological and physical safety is the foundation and what's important. Um, to make sure kids are able to learn and able to be in that mindset where they feel comfortable taking academic risks. The fourth one is my personal favorite and it's celebration. Um, really having a focus on the positive and the possible in our students, our staff, our community, and one another. Next is continuous improvement. So using data and high quality instruction to really meet that vision need of advancing student belonging, achievement, and growth. The next one was relationships, and this is specifically the relationships between our district and the community. We have really good partnerships already in place, especially at the high school and talking about work study. Um, and I know there's lots of businesses that come to second grade to talk about what that looks like in our community, and we want to continue and strengthen those relationships. Communication, being able to engage in clear, comprehensive, and consistent communication to make informed decisions. There's a lot of communication that happens both from the community to the district and the district to the community. We want to make sure that we're all working together because when we're working together, things are better. The last one is compassion. And so that's striving to teach empathy and kindness to create a community of acceptance for our differences and respect for ourselves and others. Starting in 4K, our social emotional learning curriculum teaches students about compassion and empathy in a very developmentally appropriate way. I'm glad to see that that was commuted um, also as part of our commitments and communicated throughout the entire district of things that we want to make sure our students are leaving their K-12 experience better people and better for our community. All right, now I'll pass it over to Samantha to talk about the pillars. Hi, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. I'd like to say thank you for this whole experience. Um, like RSL said, the whole experience did make me a better person and I was very impressed by the group of people there and how much we got done, the conversations that we had. And also thank you for having me tonight and allowing this platform of Zoom. This is very helpful as a single mother. Things like Zoom help me participate in activities that I otherwise wouldn't be able to because 7.30 at a school night is kind of iffy with his second grader. <laughs> so he's happy watching a movie and playing with toys. So I get to do this. So this is very helpful and I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to talk about our pillars. And this we had a lot of discussion about. First, I think our main discussion about the pillars was equity. If equity should be its own pillar or if it should be intertwined in every single pillar. We had quite a long discussion and passionate discussion about this where a lot of people were very vulnerable and shared their points of view. We ultimately came to the decision that equity should be intertwined in all pillars so that we're not just like checking off boxes and we're making sure that in everything we do equity is in our minds. We too, like with the commitment, started off with a, quite a few pillars. Don't recall the amount, but I remember Joe telling us multiple times that we would like to get everything done that you say like in five years. So you got, we gotta, we gotta figure this out. And so we shrunk it down to, to the list that you see here because we want we want them to be goals, we want them to be challenging, but we also want them to be attainable. And we want to actually be able to do what these pillars say. So I will just go through them really quick. The first one is educational excellence and improve academic achievement with a focus on literacy and closing traditionally under uh, the gaps in traditionally underserved groups. We were given a lot of data from the district for um, the past years. And we did notice that we 
do very well in math and science, but we could improve a lot on literacy. So that is where that comes from. And we do have some gaps in traditionally underserved groups between groups that aren't underserved. So that is what we decided to focus on, which would be the main priority under educational excellence. Family and community engagement, I'd like to bridge meaningful and constructive communication and partnerships um, to ensure equitable access, representation and voice. So this goes from communication within the, to the students, to the parents, as well as to the community, to community members that don't have children that aren't really involved, to businesses, to creating partnerships with the village government and just becoming like one, our district becoming part of the community as a whole. Our next pillar is exceptional staff where we'd like to provide an inclusive work environment that fosters open communication, collaborative collaboration, growth, and support to promote high levels of well-being, as well as actively recruit and retain a diverse staff representative of a global society. And so that comes into a lot of things when it comes to staff from anywhere from support staff to building and maintenance up to teachers up to administration for like everyone as a whole to feel comfortable and happy and proud of their workplace and make this a place that people want to work and be. And then next was resource allocation and create a fiscally and environmentally responsible operational plan that is equitable, sustainable, and adaptable to evolving needs and priorities. And then deepen the investment in, what did I say? Deepen the investment in district diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts throughout the community partnerships and district actions. So this is, um, we do do some of these things uh, very well right now, but we need to continue as needs are changing in our society and our community. I know like environmentally was brought up a lot and how it can be environmentally responsible and how we can run our buildings to be like sustainable. And then the deep investment in district diversity. So this includes everything from an equity director to clubs to, um, like library books, so everything that like equity involves that like that takes money to do. And then also we thought it would be important and to define what equity is. And so this isn't really like part of the pillars. This is just like a side note to the entire plan that will be on like the, um, the full publicly released plan once it gets all like pretty graphic design. And uh, McFarland uses the uh, Wisconsin DPI's definition of educational equity. And that means systems that are set up so every student has access to the resources and educational rigor they need at the right moment in their education across race, gender, ethnicity, language, ability, sexual orientation, family background, and or family income. And we thought that was very important because a lot of times in society, when we talk about equity, the first thing that comes to people's mind is race and equity involves a lot of um, different demographics. So we really wanted to highlight that as well. Good. Join us. So, um, <laughs> is there any uh, wisdom you would like to add to what we've shared before we entertain questions? Um, thanks. No, I, I think everybody covered it. I was here just to like answer questions or if there were any. Um, but you guys have said everything really well. I think, you know, I was one of definitely one of the people that was focused on the equity part. And I think you know, be, like everybody said, it was, there were a lot of deep discussions and a lot of emotions that were had. And, and what I loved is that a lot of people came to this with, you know, certain thoughts and then through discussions, some people, you know, we, we changed 
our minds and went, you know what, you brought up a good point. I actually am coming back and I'm going to go a different way now. And so, um, so I thought, you know, in the pillars, that was a perfect example. You know, some people wanted a fifth pillar for DEI and, and having it go in everyone. Um, and then having the base be equity so that like, like they said, you're just, everything we do, we're looking in the lens of equity. Um, so I, yeah, I think that that, that's all I have to say. <laughs> questions from the board? Anyone? I don't have questions, but I do mainly have comments. Um, first, thank you all. This was a really wonderful presentation. I really do hope that the community is either watching or goes back and watches it because I think it's a really great summary of what happened and how you arrived at all of your decisions. Um, I've heard lots of feedback that the exactly the same as what you all have provided, that it was a really wonderful experience and um, lots of vulnerability, which I think is really important when you're trying to figure out, you know, where you're headed for the next five years. Um, and a couple of things that I especially appreciated um, was the aim for a diverse staff representative of a global society because um, that's just actually more representative and we know that our community is not. And so if we really want our kids to know what the world is like, that's, that's a really um, wonderful thing to pull out that I, I mean, all of it is really wonderful. Um, and then I really appreciate the, the asterisk for the educational equity and defining that and pulling that out because I think um, sometimes when people think about equity, yes, they think about just race, and we do need to think about it in all the realms, um, but also that equity doesn't always mean equal. Like it really is providing what each learner needs when they need it. So that's, I think that's an important thing to, to pull out too. So yeah, just really wonderful, wonderful ideas all brought together. Thank you. I thought the presentations were unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You guys did a great job, and you know, I I took part in that, and I I really, um, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. It was it was <laughs> intimidating at times. It was uh, exhilarating at times, but uh, I really felt like we did a very nice job. That was really wonderful. A great experience for me. I have a couple things here. Um, I think that I was part of. As an observer, I was able to observe the whole discussion about the fifth pillar and integrate them. And I think one thing no one considered was we could do it both ways. You know, it's not one way is the wrong, is the wrong way. There might be a better way, but I think we were too quick to assume it had to be either or. And again, as I shared with um, this group probably back in summer, uh, you know, I'll go back to when we introduced the whole realm of technology here. We wanted to integrate it into everything we did, but we had a s separate goal just for that, to make sure that it got off the ground, while at the same time, we were able to integrate it into the curriculum. That's a good example of uh, both ways. So I'm disappointed that we don't have it both ways, uh, because I think it limits us somewhat. But again, we create this committee, so why wouldn't we go ahead and prove it? You know, we have a lot of good minds thinking. I think another thing is, um, from the get-go, we were talking about a five-year plan. And it wasn't too long ago we talked about three-year plans. Now it jumped up to five-year plans. Taking a look at these uh, objectives, I think some of these can be met in three years. You know, we aren't differentiating between a heavy-duty objective versus sort of a lighter objective. Um, so that's one thing I do have a reservation about. Objectives should not take the same amount of time. You know, they're sort of like kids in their learning. You know, everyone starts at the same time, but they all finish at different times. And I guess um, I would like to have seen that part, of the part also. I love the idea that you identified literacy as a curriculum goal, because I think that will help us move ahead in the district here. And lastly, I mentioned this, I think, last board meeting or two board meetings ago, I love the mission and the vision that you came up with. 
I think we should have that painted on our wall here. We have very talented faculty, retired faculty, students. It wouldn't take them long to uh, paint that vision and mission. So it's always in front of us all the time. But great work. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all the time that you guys spent. Um, I, I would also just comment on the exceptional work that you've done. I mean, it's, it's, it just goes to show, I guess, when you put the right people in a room, you know, and kind of lock them in there for a bit, <laughs> <laughs> that it's, it's, it's really kind of remarkable what can be accomplished. Mm -hmm. You know, and if everybody in the room has a common goal and a common cause, you know, it, it, it's just like the board. Mm -hmm. We all have our differences, we all have different ideas, but at the end of the day, we all want to do what's best for the kids in the community. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we need to be fiscally responsible, we need to be environmentally responsible. I love that that's addressed in here. But I, I just can't commend you enough on the work that you folks have done, and I can't tell you how much it's appreciated um, by the people here in this room. So thank you, and uh, I think we're a better district for the work that you folks have done. Uh, I just have a couple comments. Um, first off, you might not have even known it, but in 2021, when we started talking about the strategic plan and we were trying to pick certain pillars, we had the same discussion <laughs> about whether equity should be a pillar or it should just be incorporated into every pillar. And actually, at the time, we felt like it should be incorporated into every pillar. So you did exactly what a lot of us <laughs> talked about without even knowing it. Um, but second, I don't know if you've watched any of the board meetings. I'm a skimmer. I don't like lots of wordiness. Mm -hmm. And you guys did a great job of making this very easy to read and very easy to understand for anyone. So mm -hmm. Kate Joe job. hammered that over and over. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so you guys did great. Thank you so much. I just thought there was a lot of love in that room, to be honest with you. And it's just love for the community and love for this, this school district. So it was really fun. It was really an enjoyable opportunity. I think the key now is how do we bring the other 75, 80% mm -hmm. of community involved in, with us? Mm -hmm. Because we have such a small percentage of community that, have, that are connected to the schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I really appreciate that partnership between the community mm -hmm. and the uh, school, that clear articulation. Mm -hmm. But the next step is gonna be more challenging. Mm -hmm. How can we engage them? How can we go to them? So the no, good news is don't have to come to us. the good news is there, Tom, is that the village is aware of that. You know some of the yeah, they leadership, are. and and I think Mr. Tarnator is as well. I should point out, I I do feel like in some ways that we should just thank uh, Dr. Anderson because I mean he mm -hmm. he was he just recognized we needed, and I was talking to um, Mr. Tarnator about this and the idea that I I really I I always thought of. Uh, Dr. Anderson is kind of a farm boy with chores to do and he was going to get it done. But he really respected the fact that, that Aaron wanted to, in the end, ultimately carry this out. And I think that was really, really a great idea. But I, I was just happy that, you know, he, he allowed that. And I think you made some changes that you wanted to see. And I think it's reflected in here, Aaron. So I think it's something we should all be very proud of. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Anything else? No, I was just going to say, Tom, to your comment about how hard it's going to be to action this and really get the involvement that we're looking for. I 100% agree with you, and I'm worried about it now, right? Because <laughs> you participated in this process, and it's like, oh, no. How are we going to create the excitement and engagement? And I don't know how. Um, I do know that one of the things the committee recommended was that it's somehow embedded in the metrics that the community involvement is there so that the data can be evaluated. Um, and then I just know personally my commitment is, okay, I gotta show up now and I gotta listen to the board meetings and I gotta be here. So you have one more person involved if that helps you. <laughs> so I think it's gonna take time, but I, I think in this community it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, it is. That's great. Well, I, I personally, I feel bolstered by the fact that with this presentation is also, um, we see two dates already on the calendar 
for the next action mm -hmm. steps, to create the action steps, and then a commitment to an annual review. So I feel like, you know, there is there is a lot of accountability, or at least a decent start at accountability yeah, in there. Absolutely. So that's I that helps me feel better. Yeah. Do we have a date when we can bring that whole committee back a year from now, so they can see how much gain we've made here in the district? Mm -hmm. Is there any interest in that? Yep, yep, then that's on my to-do list, is okay. just to kind of figure out when that would be, whether it would be, you know, in, in December or January of in a year from now, so, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be exciting. Yeah, it's very Gonna exciting. be a big deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Yes. yes. Thank you for Thank coming you. and joining Thank us. You. Thank you for Thank you very sacrificing much. your time for us. Mm -hmm. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Okay, district administrators report, please. All right, so, uh, wow, that's like that, that was so uplifting, and now I'm talking about <laughs> drills. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a good segue. Um, so you see in the information um, shared with you that we did have um, some um, opportunities to practice some of our administrative holds were, were the things that you saw. Three at Wabisa and one at, one at the high school. And one of the things I pointed out the last time, but I, I just really think it's important for us to know, is that when these things happen, particularly with, with the holds, they're really about protecting student privacy. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's something that you might not think about. And I know I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again, because a lot of times what it is is, for example, on one of these issues was a medical issue, and just res respecting that student's privacy when they're having a medical issue, or you know, sometimes students are having difficulty regulating their emotions and protecting um, their privacy. I just think it's, it's an interesting thing. We often think of the students, the other students being unsafe, and that's why we do these type of things, but I think it's an interesting. I appreciate that that was also communicated in the family, communicate like, you know that we as families received mm -hmm. that as a reminder mm -hmm. that it's a lot about privacy. Is you're right. It's not what parents' minds often go to first. Yeah, because like. we don't want people to feel like their their students were potentially unsafe in situations mm -hmm. like that. So. Mm -hmm. And some recognitions. Um, I you know I shared some of this with you in the minutes, but I think it's great to to celebrate here publicly. The Future Quest event, so eighth graders all went to a, to a career expo at the Lion Energy Center where all the career clusters, 16 of them, uh, were recognized, hands-on opportunities. And one of the things I heard a few comments about, and I just really wanted to acknowledge, I thought it was really cool, but then middle school staff were saying how much they appreciated having high school student volunteers mm -hmm. that were there. So I believe there were 17 high school student volunteers, and they were actually there the whole day helping different students. So I just think it's a really neat um, thing to celebrate. The question was asked at our last, I think it was the last board meeting, maybe the one before, about youth apprenticeship and how we, I think Tom asked that question about how do we compare with other districts? And I just wanted to acknowledge um, publicly, you will hear from Penny Thompson, I think in January is typically when she comes, um, but I wanted to just get it out um, that we continue to have the largest number of participants in youth apprenticeship uh, in the area. 61, um, which I'm not gonna name number two, but, but we're almost double them. You do have that information. Um, and not only um, do we have the most um, in the area, but that's double from where we were in 2019-20. So that's a, a significant increase um, for a variety of factors. Um, one of the things besides the, the amazing work that's being done here at the high school, another thing is just the job market. Mm. And so employers sure. are welcoming youth apprentice, apprentices um, more so than they did before. But we continue to add new, new companies um, to the list. So. But you'll be hearing more. I don't want to you know, <laughs> take too much away from, from uh, Penny's wonderful presentation. Um, and also wanted to share the, with the school report cards coming up, we presented our results to you, um, but, but at that point didn't have how we compared with other um, districts. And so certainly we always have work to do. We don't wanna say because 
we are one of the, the, the highest scores in the area that that means we're good enough. Don't want anybody to get the impression. Um, that's certainly not the case. We're always working to get better. Um, but it was nice to, to, to have it noted that we were the um, third highest district in Dane County in our, our district report card. Um, just kind of a nice thing to, to recognize. Upcoming dates and events, it is Computer Science Education Week, so that's something certainly to celebrate. The amount of um, expertise that our students have is really amazing, especially related to coding, and that's something you often don't think about. You know, our kids are coding on a regular basis because of the amazing expertise in this district. And we've got a choir, or orchestra concert, excuse me, uh, coming up tomorrow for the middle school. High school band concert on the 7th. And then we have a special board meeting. It makes it sound more exciting than a special, <laughs> special board meeting. With, um, we'll be having the presentation um, with Dan Nierad about the superintendent evaluation. So you'll get to learn how to evaluate me on Thursday, so thank you. And Friday is a professional development day for our staff. A lot of things going on in different buildings. Um, a lot focused on our culturally and linguistically responsive teaching and learning. Um, high school, I know, is having some hate speech um, professional development as a follow-up to previous professional development. I'm confident that I don't know what's going on in all the other buildings, but I'm sure that at K2 they're focusing on literacy and the letters training. So thank you, families, um, for having your kids home that day. <laughs> the Monday is the a National Honor Society in, induction ceremony. Do we know what time that is? I don't. 5.30. 5.30? Mm -hmm. It's at 5.30. Thank you, thank you, Kate. Uh, oh I God, really didn't hear doing it. Really did. I was going to say, well, congratulations. Well yeah. Well yeah. <laughs> you just happen to know that. Yeah, she's up on the calendar. I clearly didn't know it, so <laughs> nice work. Well exciting, exciting. Nice work, Kara. Yeah. It's very exciting. Um, the 14th is, if you're looking for, for a, a choir concert to go to, middle and high school together uh, for a choir concert. And then at, Here at fifth, the PAC? Yes. Mm -hmm. Probably at 7, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, nope. Um, all right. <laughs> you don't have that one. It Man. is at 7, verified. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> No 15th is 5th grade here. orchestra, so we have 5th grade orchestra mm -hmm. on the 15th. And then the 19th, we do have a very exciting uh, board meeting um, with special guest um, Jeff Mahoney, business manager, with a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> and the most exciting thing, because I got an email about it today, community, uh, we will be bringing the calendar um, to you for mm -hmm. consideration yeah. and, and hopefully approval. Um, on the 19th for next year's calendar and some other stuff. So yeah, so that concludes my report. Can I ask a couple questions? Yes, you may. Uh, we only have one board meeting in January, January 9th, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And I think that is typically to allow time for the, um, the convention. The con yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Probably. Yeah. Secondly, uh, I think I talked about this before when Dr. Nirad was here. Um, there's like a 20 or 30 minute video online about mm -hmm. evaluation. Is he going to play that again, or is, can we watch that ahead of time so he doesn't have to? He's certainly not going to play it. I mean, it's gonna, he's going to be um, here presenting to you in person. Okay. So I, mean, I just don't I can wanna... send that back out to the board if they want to watch it in right. advance, but yeah. I, I don't know that you would need to. Good. Okay. So there isn't anything that we necessarily need to do to prepare besides log in? <laughs> Which I'm failing at. Which hasn't hasn't been the Not easiest. Not for lack of effort. <laughs> I had an issue too, so and I had to ask for assistance from them, and they fixed it. Okay. Well, so good. I'm glad I'm not the only it. one. I always say that. Okay. Anything else before we move along to our action items here? Okay. The first is action on adoption of School District of McFarland Strategic Plan commitments, pillars, and objectives. Do I have a motion? I will make that motion. I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously, 5-0. Thank you and congratulations.
Yeah. <laughs> we passed. <Thanks. laughs> okay, secondly, action on second reading and adoption of policies. 0100, uh, definite, and I'm not going to read all these. There's quite a few. Um, so are there questions? Well, actually, I would look for a motion first to uh, approve the sec these policies at the second reading. I move to approve the second reading and adoption of policies 0100, 0161-1213, 1421-2700.01, 3121-3212, and 8146 as recommended by administration. Thank you very much, Kate. <laughs> you are welcome. I'll second that <laughs> well. <laughs> Any other discussion? Yes, I brought this up last time. It's uh, policy 0100 under definitions, under the uh, paragraph of, of voting, Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a question I had last time. It seems like typically, typically in our district, if you've go, gone in closed session, you have to be present in the closed session mm -hmm. to vote. Uh, That's my understanding. But I'd like to have clarification on this because it talks about you can participate in a closed session remotely. And I wasn't quite sure how that voting piece worked out, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Can we yeah. still, do we vote? In closed session, we typically remotely? don't. Vote we do in not close. I know typically, but what does session? I mean, you can vote in closed okay. session. Yeah. I mean, there are certain exceptions. The only way you can vote in closed session is if the reason why you're in closed session also necessitates that you vote in closed session too, because of whatever legal reason that you're in closed session. So in some cases, you discuss it and you vote in open but there are exceptions to when you can vote in closed session. Yeah, because two things they talked about was expulsion and firings, and mm -hmm. those are typically in closed sessions. Mm -hmm. um, but the qualifier is based on legal consultation, mm -hmm. whether yes. or not. Could I get some examples of that? Because I'm not, I, because I'm can, not sure what that means. Yeah, I can do that. Do okay. you feel like that um, you'd like those before approving that policy or? No, I don't need it before. After that, no. yeah. That's on my to-do Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Action on McFarland School District, Grow Your Own Program, Memorandum of Understanding. I would look for a motion for approval. I'll move to approve the McFarland School District, Grow Your Own Program, Memorandum of Understanding as recommended by administration. Thank you. All second. Tom, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Action on recommended WEVA, Destination Career Academy and Insight School of Wisconsin Statute 118.408G, Student Transfers to Resident Districts. At this time, WEVA, Destinations Career Academy and Insight, Wisconsin, Insight School of Wisconsin are requesting approval of recommended student transfers back to their resident districts due to lack of engagement. I would look for a motion to approve. I will make that. Bruce. Second? I'll second. Okay, discussion? No, well, because you'll know what I'll say, so. <laughs> <laughs> you just picked up where I left off a couple of years ago, so. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0, and I would look for a motion to adjourn. I'll okay, we can just say that. I'll make that motion yeah. to adjourn. Okay. You don't I'll, always make it. I'll second that. Okay. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Job well done this evening, everyone, and we are adjourned at 8.05. Wow. That's, uh, that's close to a record. Great <laughs> work. Wow, that was All so... because of you. It's true. <laughs> nice work. That was very nice. Great job. It was. Great job. It was great. Well done, yeah. I really did.